Welcome along guys and welcome back to the garage. First of all, I hope everyone had a fantastic Christmas and New Year. It is 2021. Let's pray 2021 is going to be better than 2020. Did anyone get anything nice for Christmas? I got myself a new, a new toy for the garage. You know Iron Man has Jarvis. Well, I've got myself Mavis. Mavis, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm your Google Assistant. I like helping you and taking long walks on the beach, provided a long enough extension cord or a charger. Quite useful for the garage. It'll be able to play me music, be able to tell me talk specs, <laughs> all sorts of things. Mavis is quite versatile. Mavis, what do you think of the bike so far? The bike looks incredible, absolutely top notch, but why have you had Botox? Both Botox? No, this is a shaving accident. I actually cut myself shaving yesterday, sort of shaping the moustache. I, I cut myself here. I also cut myself here as well. It's not scars or, or, or a bodged Botox job, honestly. Mavis, you're getting me into trouble. So I Christmas has been good. Where is the Hypermotard project? Don't you start. So as you can see, this could be quite an interesting episode. Are you under warranty still? I can see you going back at this rate. Chopsy, roll the intro. Okay, so in today's episode, what are we going to be doing? Today, we're going to be fitting the Power Commander. If you've not seen the previous episodes of this build, there's I've installed a Rottweiler Airbox kit, the SAS Delete kit. I'll put links up the top. So you can go and take a look. Today we're going to fit the Power Commander, perhaps the Dashboard Assistant. I'm going to go into a little bit about mapping and the difference between maps and all that. A lot of people are going to ask me, why am I installing a Power Commander? You know, what's the difference between a Power Commander and flashing the bike? With the H2, of course, I went to see Chris at CJS and we went into the ECU and actually modified the fuel tables directly in the ECU. A power commander is like a, an add-on third-party unit, which basically you plug in line with the bike connectors and it interrupts those signals and modifies them and adds more fuel, adds more ignition. So it's the same thing. The end result is the same. You know, you're modifying the fueling of the bike to better suit any modifications you've done and to sort of bypass any restrictions which are put in place for emissions, etc. So both things come to the end, same end result more power, better response of the way the bike rides. But the Power Command is something you can do at home yourself, which is quite nice. It also means if there's an issue, you can um, disconnect it. So if the bike's got to go back to the dealer and you're worried about warranties because of some mods you've done, you can disconnect that hardware, make it all back to standard, and people would be none the wiser that things have been played with. Whereas a map where you're directly modifying the ECU, it's not so easy to roll back and it may even leave a telltale sign that it has been modified. So in some ways, you know, power commanders are brilliant. You can't use them in all applications because of course, some bikes have other restrictions built into them. Like the H2 again, for, ex for example, you know, the throttle body's not opening at high revs. Power commanders can't fix that. Power commanders can only adjust fueling and ignition. They can't turn on and off features on the ECU themselves. So there we go. But first of all, before we get into the fitting of the Power Commander detail, let me just show you some of the new bits I've got to go on as part of the build. Let's take a look. I think Ducati Hypermotard are better than KTM Supermoto. So what bling have we got to show off this week? Well, I finally got my Tecmo parts come through. Tecmo, 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 Tecmo. What we have is something which really just looks cool and probably won't serve much practical purpose. This is a front caliper cooling duct, if you like. So caliper cooling duct goes around the front disc, directs cool air at the caliper. It's full pre-preg carbon fiber, meaning, you know, it's not fiberglass backed, it's baked in a proper enclave oven under pressure and all that, you know, so it's incredibly light, incredibly strong, and uh, yeah, the quality of it, absolutely beautiful. I've also got the uh, little piece which goes by the key, by the ignition. Exactly the same stuff, you know, full carbon quality. This is, you know, goes around the uh, the key. The key piece. The kit also comes with a spacer. 
to fit the 690. So that goes, I think that replaces like the wheel spacer. When you, well, when we put all this together, we'll see. And I may get, this is sort of a billet piece, but I may get this uh, powder coated or Cerakoted. So there we go. Not a huge amount of new parts to go on for this episode, but it's quality, not quantity. So let's get into the detail of this video. Let's have a look at the Dynajet kit. Let's have a quick look at the instructions it comes with and let's see how we fit this beauty. Mavis, can you tell me a little bit about the Power Commander, please? A Power Commander allows you to remap your bike's air fuel ratio to be optimized for your aftermarket modifications. Do you want a little more context? No, I, I think you've said it all. So what we got in the box? What's in the box of goodies? USB cable, that's to uh, connect to it and, and do its business. Instructions, quite a lot of instructions. And then the actual module itself with the wiring. Um, yeah, all oh, that's got to go on the bike. Let's get going. Yeah, crank position, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 easy, absolutely easy, let's crack on. So there's the unit, there's the bike, I've actually done a couple of these before, I did Greg's on his 701 and his son Alex's on their 701, so I can sort of remember what happened, it's fairly straightforward, I'm saying this will take 30 minutes to fit, once you've got the bike stripped to this stage of course, um, pretty easy, you've got to pick up on the coil packs down here, both coil packs, the throttle position sensor, the crank position sensor and connect onto the battery. So it's not that much to do. And of course, onto the injector as well. So it's basically piggyback connections. I've taught you through it. Let's get stuck in. Mavis, have you got any advice for me? Don't cock it up. Useful as ever. I've actually ordered myself a lithium battery for this bike as well. So that battery's really heavy. So I've decided to, to, to order a lithium battery should save me probably about three kilos I think because it's, it's particularly heavy that one so we're going lithium so all that's got to come out when the battery gets here but I'm just you know I've taken some of the brackets which hold that battery in so what I'm saying is I ought to really just put this back in just so I can make sure everything's going to fit what you do have to think about when mounting this is the USB port you need to get access to that USB port so I really need it that way up what you're going to do is, is mount the power commander with on just a piece of velcro and you know, stick it to the back here but it's so far down in there it's actually got nothing behind it and it's wedged in there quite nicely so i'm actually not going to bother they've changed the design of this and how this works over the years every year they seem to slightly modify this battery box design and with this when this bit slides over the top of the battery which is about there to line up the holes to mount it it wasn't room and it was actually hitting this and it wasn't room for this. So I've actually had to cut five mil off the back of this plate. It's only aluminium, just saw through that with just the hand saw, took five mil off it and then it all sits in there, it all mounts in there. It's all out of the way, it's all secure. Jobs are good in. Right, yeah. That's the wiring through to the front of the bike. So the first connector we need to get into is the throttle position connector. This is the, the TPS unit here and the connector for it is just here. There we go. That is the throttle position sensor wire. These are the wires from the power commander. So basically you create a piggyback. You plug the power commander into the stock harness and you put the other end of the power commander back into the throttle position sensor there we go nice click sound and that's it we're then connected into the throttle position sensor with the power commander okay I was getting really worried then I couldn't find the crank position sensor it was hidden back other the other side of the throttle body I thought this big connector they'd, they'd, they'd amalgamated the crank position sensor in with this big 
lot of wiring here, which I think is just for the gear position sensor and some other stuff. But I thought they'd built the crank position sensor into this connector with all these wires. But I found it, it was right around the back, tucked right up under there. So there is the piggyback, which goes to the power commander. So we've got to unplug the stop connector, feed this in line. So we'll unplug that one, that one into there, that one into there. The next step's gonna be a little bit tricky because I've got to connect into the fuel injector now, which is under the Rottweiler kit. <laughs> so I really need to just take this off, I suppose, but I can't be bothered. So I'm just gonna get my hands in there and poke about and do a bit of jiggery pokery. Try and connect in these injector wires, piggyback it to the injector, which is under here. So it's time to shove my hands in and see what I can find. Oh, it's there somewhere, I can feel him. Oh, I may have to take it off, you twat chops. Aha, got him, gotcha. The piggyback, in on, like that, and then I've got to plug this back on there. That's it, done it. <laughs> got him. Okay, what do we have left? We have these, so we've done the throttle position sensor, we've done the crank position sensor, we've connected into the fuel injector, mm -hmm. I think these are just now for the ignition pickup because the power commander can actually do timing as well. It can increase, part one of the maps is to increase the ignition advance. So you've got to get into the uh, coil packs so it can add a little bit more ignition or take some away, of course. So these are the coil packs, not that one, that one and that one behind. So these two here, you can't see the second one. One's got a white connector, one's got a black connector. Okay, I'm the black two pin connector from the inner coil stick and the white two pin connector from the out coil stick. Plug the pair of PVC wire harnesses with the green coloured wires in line with the inner coil pack. So the green, this one has green, so that's the inner coil pack. And the, LED, and the wiring harness with the blue coloured wires goes to the white coil pack. Okay, so that one goes to that one, that one goes to the other one inside. Plug in here. Wire out, feed through the power commander wires. There we go. So white is blue, just check that. So plug piggyback him into that end and the connector end goes on here. Bingo. And then we'll push all the wires back in and we zip tie them out of the way. So that's the Power Commander all installed. I'm just gonna go around with some zip ties which come with the kit and tidy everything up as best as possible. And then we turn it on, connect the laptop to it, and have a look at some maps. Ooh, interesting. Okay, Mavis, tell us about Power Commander maps. It adjusts the fuel injection to optimize the fuel air ratio in accordance to the increased airflow and modified power delivery dynamics. All right, smart ass. So what I've done, I've connected, I've just lifted the ECU out of the way a little bit again. I've connected the USB cable into the top of the power commander, linked in to my laptop. Map received successfully. So I've turned the bike on. The map has been uploaded from the power commander to display it on the screen here, basically. This is the map which Dynajet UK very kindly loaded onto the power commander before they sent it to me. And you can see what they've said here. There's some notes here, so it says, 2019-2020 KTM SMCR out with Arrow system with the cat in it. That's slightly different to mine. And the Evo airbox lid, so not the full Rottweiler airbox. So not exactly my spec there. So what you have here is the bike's revs down the left, the throttle position along the top from zero to 100%. And in each of these tables, you have a value. And basically what this value means, say take this one for example, at 15% throttle and at 3,500 revs, we've got a value of 18. What that means is 18% more fuel at that throttle position at that revs. So as you can see, it's quite a lot more fuel, 20% more fuel here. If you're looking at just 100% throttle, this is when you've got the throttle pinned, you can see 23% more fuel at 4,000 revs, so a fair bit more fuel, but at the top end, there's actually less fuel going in. So interestingly, it looks like the bikes are a little bit rich at the top, but they're lean in the mid-range. So there's more fuel going in the mid-range. And that's probably due to emissions. The bikes are tuned 
um, to meet emission regulations, of course. That map would probably be fine to run the bike. What Dynajet have said is, you know, when we're out of lockdown, I can take this bike up to them and we do a custom map because that's a generic map for that spec. You know, you can all, normally always improve that with a custom map for your own bike. But in the meantime, I think I've got a better map than that because Rottweiler Performance sent me one of their maps, which is for their airbox with a Tecmo header and I think even an arrow back box. So I've got a much closer map to the one which Dynajet have provided me. So let's load that one. So here we have the Rottweiler map. This is the one which Chris at Rottweiler uh, sent me. And as you can see, the spec on this one is for a 690 Enduro with the Rottweiler intake system, Tecmo header and Tecmo back box. So the only difference between this and my bike it will be the back box will be different. So this will be much closer than the, uh, the one Dynajet provided me. And if we look at this, um, you can see there's more fuel going in on this map. Because the Rotty kit obviously lets more air in, obviously you're going to need more fuel as well to compensate for this. And to take an example of that, if we look at the, the upper end of the rev range at 100% throttle, rather than minus figures, we've got some plus figures here. So there's more fuel going in, even when the bike is, is wide open at the, at near the red line. So that's the difference. You can see the Rotti kit is using more fuel and probably making more power than uh, the, the, with just the airbox lid, which is what the, uh, the Evo lid, which is what the other map had. This area around here is your sort of usable riding area, if you like. And this is where the bikes are quite restrictive standard when it's sort of lower down the rev range. Below about 3000 revs, this is the closed loop area of the map. So the lambda sensor in the exhaust is actually, the ECU is controlling the fueling in this area by default. So you can't make any changes in this area unless you bypass the standard lambda. So what will happen is if you increase and put extra fuel into this area, the ECU, you know, the lambda sensor will pick that up and it will adjust this back down to lean again. So you'll always be running lean in this area because that's the way the bikes are set up to run under the closed loop. It's a little bit technical, but just to let you know, if, if you want to, you really need the dongle to bypass the Lambda sensor with any sort of power command, any sort of mods, because the bike is controlling fueling in the lower rev range with the low, with the, uh, the standard um, narrow band Lambda sensors. This is in this area. So if you're adding a power command and make sure you've got the dongle to buy, I'll show you the dongle. Let me show you the dongle. Let me show you the dongle. This is the dongle you need to plug into the Lambda connector on the bike. It's got a couple of little resistors in there. It means it just takes away the closed loop fueling basically, so you can get correct fueling at the bottom end. And that'll really make the bike feel much nicer at the lower end of the rev range. So there we go guys, thanks for watching. I think that's all we've got time for really on this episode. Next time we will be fitting the Tecmo header and the, and the arrow end can. So the exhaust is going to be next episode. Also, the cockpit assistant will be the next episode as well. So exhaust and cockpit assistant to come. If you're not already subscribed, click that button, tick that bell, join the fun. <laughs> Mavis, should they subscribe? Don't subscribe to his channel. He should not be encouraged as an absolute twat. Iron Man never had this trouble.